worth over four billion pounds a year to Aldi, getting it right at dinner time could be very lucrative for a new supplier. I'm always looking for quality, but if I can also land something that will surprise our shoppers and keep them coming back for more, that's the absolute dream. Hoping to make that wish come true are third generation butchers and brothers. There you go, what do you think of that? Lovely, good, isn't it? Adnan and Manny Malik from Wolverhampton. We're still at the same site that my grandfather bought in 1970. As Muslims, they choose not to eat pork, but they've found an ingenious way to recreate some British classics. Growing up as a kid, watching TV programmes, things like Only Fools and Horses, Del Boy going in the cafe in a full English breakfast, these were things that I wanted to try. So what Adnan cleverly did was devise halal versions of the meats that we previously couldn't eat. So we've got beef bacon, we've got chicken sausages, and we've got lamb ham. We've now expanded that range to include wagyu pastrami. The business is going from strength to strength. We've got people coming from all over the country because we're servicing the halal market in a way that it's never been serviced before. They've added a deli and a street food operation, plus online deliveries. We make everything from scratch, so we've got provenance in terms of knowing where the meat comes from, from farm to fork. As a family business, we really put a lot of care and attention into developing our products, and I think that comes through when you try it. The Malik brothers will be competing against five other suppliers with products including crab cakes. I do think my product deserves a spot on Aldi's shelf. I'm excited to meet Julie. I mean, she's the head buyer of Aldi, isn't she? Possibly a bit scary. A new take on Toad in the Hole. Wow, this could be our future. Yeah, it's very exciting. And burgers with a rainbow twist. It's rather like my shirt. It's unique, it's fun, it's visually stunning, it's entertainment in a bun. Everyone is hoping it will be their product landing on the shelves. But by the end of the day, just two will be chosen for further development. So preparing an impressive presentation is essential. I need to get my crab cakes in. Slightly under pressure at the minute. The challenge is keeping ahead of the trend. And recently, we've seen supermarket ranges establish themselves as an affordable alternative to takeaways. And we expect this market to continue to grow. Yeah, we've seen a big rise in, in from scratch cooking over the last few years. Customers want to contribute to the creation of a meal, even if it's just a, a small part. This looks spectacular. Yes, it's basically recreating what I do on a daily basis. And what do you do on a daily basis? A private chef. Who are you a private chef for? <laughs> Stormzy. I just want everyone everywhere to be able to try what Vic's cooking is like. No one is exempt. Chef Vix is from South London. She started out in restaurants, but has been cooking dinners for some well-known faces for the past six years. Somebody was looking for a chef. I got put forward as, oh, you know, Vix, she, she cooks. That's how she'll do it. And that's how I started. Yeah, I'll have two, please. Okay. From cooking for the stars to now reaching for them, Chef Vix has her sights set on launching her own food empire. I want to be able to cook for thousands and mass produce it into stores all over the UK. When I see people enjoying my food, it fills me with, I can't even describe, a joy that just can't be, it can't be put into words. She's hoping a ready meal version of her most loved dish will be the first of many to grace Aldi's shelves and be enjoyed at dinner tables far and wide. This mac and cheese is special because it's got a short rib and the short rib has been slowly cooked and it's just full of flavour. It's like, who doesn't love mac and cheese? I want people all over the UK to enjoy what other people get to enjoy. We're rooting for you, we love you, you're the best. And hurry up and get back, uh, I'm hungry. It would be the opportunity of a lifetime to have my product in Aldi. It would just be crazy. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Cannot wait to taste whatever is in that oven. <laughs> you lead the way. And then don't touch it. OK, everybody, that's it. You've done all you can. 
Hello. Hop in. The suppliers have just one chance to impress Julie. Nice Hello. to see you. Only those that show best seller potential will be asked to stay. Those that don't will be asked to leave. You ready for some dinner? Oh, born ready. Pitching first are the Malik brothers with their trailblazing meats. We're on a mission to raise the standards of the halal meat industry. Within this tray, you'll see a selection of what we have coined the unholy trinity of meats. And those are meats that were considered taboo for us to eat as British Muslims growing up. So those obviously are sausages, bacon and ham. We believe there's a massive gap on the shelves for Aldi specifically. The halal market is worth £5 billion each year. And the reason for that is we love our meat. So whilst the UK population of Muslims is only just under 7%, we actually account for 20% of overall lamb consumption. I'll shut up now and I'll let you guys eat. Who's the eldest? He's the eldest. How did you do? Uh, he went on a bit and sat that long in the car. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I was thinking, cut it. Oh. So that was one take, man. I've never been <laughs> <that before. laughs> You smashed it. <laughs> All right, let's get involved in this. <laughs> Try that Wagyu pastrami, that's delicious. Texture-wise, exactly mm. what I'm expecting yeah. from pastrami. And that lamb ham, mm. again, in terms of texture, identical mm. to a thick-cut ham. A long time ago, we did sell lamb ham, okay. but we didn't sell hardly any of it. And so I would be very frightened of trying it again. Out of the products that are here, Wagyu pastrami is, is the most mainstream and therefore would have the widest appeal to an Aldi customer. In terms of volume, how many packs of this can you produce? So, okay. Ooh, I can do about five, 600 kilos in my facility at the moment. How Time, big is this pack? That's 100 grams. Malik Butchers could produce around 6,000 packs, but Aldi's minimum order of any product is 20,000, so they'd need to upscale their production. Right, Julie, do you think this has potential to be on the shelves of Aldi? I'm going to rule out lamb ham, okay. wagyu pastrami. The product's really good. I think the customers would like it. There's a lot of hurdles that we'll, we'd need to have a look at. But let's keep you here Fantastic. and see what we can do. Fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you You're sticking much. around. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Are you making him carry it back as well? Yeah. How outrageous. I need a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> well done. He nailed it, he nailed it. He'd done really well. I felt it went on for a little while too long. Why'd you but... want to say that for? <laughs> You're an idiot. Got your final couple. I, I think. Yes, I have. Aldi are searching for the next big dinner time product to sit on their shelves nationwide hoping they'll be selected to go through to the next stage, a Leonati catering. We're going to go back in that room and we're going to find out which two of us are going to be the lucky ones. The fabulous catch company. Waiting for the result is actually much more nerve-wracking than the rest of the day. Malik Butchers. If we were selected to get through, we'd obviously be proud as punch. We'd probably stop bickering for a couple of minutes. And Stonehouse Smokery. It feels so much better now it's all done, to be honest with you. I've been so nervous all day. Who knows who it's going to be? I'm not counting my chickens just yet. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for your patience. Brilliant pitches, brilliant products, but the two suppliers who are still in with the chance to win that incredible contract to supply Aldi are... The fabulous catch company. <sighs> and Stonehouse Smokery. <laughs> wow, thank you. My feedback for the fabulous catch company is your product, they're too small and they are too expensive. I think you should look at making them into a, a twin pack, but slightly larger. Stonehouse Smokery. I really like the food waste element, but you, your portion size is quite big. Your packaging really doesn't sell the story, and look, you've been very honest about the volume, so we need to understand how you get that product into an Aldi store. 
Leonati Catering, Malik Butchers, thank you for bringing in your brilliant products. Fabulous catch company and Stonehouse Smokery. Anita and I are coming to yours for dinner to check how you're getting on with Julie's feedback and to learn a bit more about you and your business. Wow. <laughs> what? I couldn't quite believe it, really. I was, wasn't expecting that at all. We're uh, possibly on the brink of supplying a major supermarket. I'm going to go home and collapse, I think. I can't believe it. I'm absolutely, well, almost speechless, but I'm never speechless, so I won't be. I'm utterly delighted and just, it's all sinking in now. What we've got to do? <laughs> well done. Cheers. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Aldi are searching for the next big dinner time product to sit on their shelves nationwide. Hoping they'll be selected to go through to the next stage, a Leonati catering. We're going to go back in that room and we're going to find...